the book of Revelation for the world today, a chapter-by-chapter study of what God has revealed about the future. Welcome back to the book of Revelation for the world today. We continue studying this book, and we're in chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. It's about what God says will happen on earth after the rapture. There will be a massacre of Christians during the seven years of tribulation. Follow along as I read verses 9 to 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also, and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled." We just read the prophecy that tells us that during the seven years of tribulation, there will be people saved during that time. In today's world, in this dispensation of grace, we have a privilege of knowing the Savior and living for Him. It's not without problems and persecution, but it is nonetheless a time prior to God's wrath on this earth. We will have tribulations on the earth, but it's nothing compared to what Christians will have to face during the seven years of tribulation. We are not suffering with blood and tears, torture and decapitation at this moment, at least here in the United States. But things are going to get worse, and we will have to take a stand for our Lord. Our text lets us see into the future and into the years of the seven years tribulation, what happens after the rapture. John sees souls in heaven. All the Christians, prior to the scroll, prior to the scroll being opened, which is the seven years of tribulation, are with the Lord enjoying His presence because of the rapture. But now we find out what happens after. We learn to better appreciate our freedom in Christ today, especially when we consider the truths that are presented in our text about the souls in heaven that were on the earth during the seven years of tribulation that John is talking about at the opening of the fifth seal. We have in our text their identity, their curiosity, their garments, and their command. Their identity. Verse 9, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Shortly after the beginning of the tribulation, there will be a great soul harvest in which many thousands, if not millions, will come to faith in Christ, many as of the, as the result of the preaching of the 144,000 Jewish witnesses described in Revelation chapter 7. Many will be under conviction after they realize that all the believers are gone and have disappeared. These tribulation saints are going to be very strong believers because they are going to have the courage to die for their faith. Most of these tribulation saints will be killed by the forces of the Antichrist. But despite the evil of the Antichrist and the wickedness of sin that exists during those days, despite the horrors of war and famine and pestilence and death, God is still wanting to save people from a lost eternity. Our text clearly states that this multitude had been slain. It is in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, that we learn that these martyrs were all killed by decapitation. They were beheaded, possibly with a guillotine. Do you know that over the past several years, the media and government have been gaining progress concerning a better way to execute the death penalty? They are thinking of using 
the guillotine. The search for a more humane way to execute will lead back to the use of the guillotine, or the chopping block. A writer on Prophetic News said years ago, and I quote him again, Not too long ago I received word that the information I received regarding the guillotines was not only accurate, it was actually being lobbied in Washington, D.C. to get them legalized for governmental use. The states I mentioned on my current events, uh, a current event page a few years back was in fact Georgia and Montana as the recipients of these guillotines. The information I had received was that 15,000 or 30,000 guillotines had been shipped to Georgia as well as Montana for safekeeping until such a time as they are needed. End of quote. Now, fact checkers say that is not accurate. But how do you fa fact check the fact checkers? Listen to this. This is facts. In the Georgia House of Representatives, 1995 to 1996, session HB 1274, under the title Death Penalty Guillotine Provisions, Code section 17-10-38 to 17-1044, entitled, A Bill to be in, Entitled an Act, the session said it is a policy to provide for death by guillotine. The intent of the General Assembly in acting this legislation is to provide for a method of execution which is compatible with the donation of organs by a condemned prisoner. That is fact and written. Now the Bible tells us that in the future there will be a massacre by decapitation or the use of the guillotine. What we read in Revelation is tomorrow's headlines in the news. So not only do we have their identity of how John is uh, of who John is talking about, we have their curiosity. We could call this their prayer. Our text says in verse 10, and they cried with a loud voice saying, "How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth?" Now, we always wonder, don't we, how heaven is going to be like? But here we have some facts that helps us understand heaven. First of all, we communicate, and we speak, and we sing, and play instruments. Our past life is not erased from our memory. We go into heaven with the memories we had on earth. In heaven, we will talk about our experiences we had on earth. This is what these martyrs were doing. They had full knowledge of how they died on earth. Their prayer was that the Lord would avenge their blood on them that took their life. Most likely, they were people that died through decapitation, for that will be the way of death under the leadership of the Antichrist. We also notice that in our heavenly state, we will be able to reason and ask questions. We still have a mind of our own. We think and ask questions. It is supposed, according to our text, that they did not understand everything that was going on, neither on earth or in heaven. And we're not going to be zombies walking around half dead and unresponsive. Here is an example of saints in heaven asking questions. Any questions we have today could be answered in heaven one day. Right now on earth, we accept by faith things that happen to us. And we accept them to be God's will. God's will is good. One day in heaven, faith will be satisfied with the answers from the very lips of our God. It will be interesting to learn and see uh, God's explanation for everything that has happened in everyone's life. These souls are not looking for vengeance, that's not in their hearts, but are just crying out for the Lord to end all of it and set up His kingdom. Our text also provides incidental proof that the soul 
does not cease to exist at death, and also that it does not cease to be conscious, or the soul does not sleep until the resurrection. They were in heaven, but their heart or mind remembered those on earth that martyred them. So we have their identity, their curiosity, and we have their garments. Verse 11 says, And white robes were given unto every one of them. Why do you think the Lord tells us that they were given white robes? First of all, it's because it's important. God wanted you to know. Certainly there is not going to be any clash of class in heaven. We're all going to be in the rich class, and I am looking forward to how these robes really appear. The only description given right now is the color, and I am supposing that they are probably so detailed that man could not comprehend the beauty of these garments. But can you imagine God clothing us with anything less than the best that heaven could produce? If you sometimes felt that when you went shopping, you could not buy the clothes you really wanted, either because they were so expensive or you felt guilty buying them, well, you will have a wardrobe that is going to leave you proud that it was handed to you by the King of Kings. These saints received these white garments, but don't forget the 24 elders were also clothed in white garments. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the preacher of the past, preaching on white robes in heaven on September 24th, 1876, said this, and I quote, I should think that in almost every nation white has indicated the joy of triumph. Often when generals have returned from battle, they and the warriors have been clothed in white or have ridden upon white horses. True, the Roman adopted purple as their imperial color, and well they might, for their victories and their rule were alike bloody and cruel. But the Christ of God sets forth his gentle and holy victories with white. It's on a white cloud that he shall come to judge the world, and his seat of judgment shall be the great white throne. And upon a white horse he shall ride, and all the armies of heaven shall follow him on white horses. He is clothed with a white garment down to his feet. So he has chosen white as the symbolic color of his victorious kingdom. And so the Redeemer or the redeemed, wear it." End of quote. These white-robed saints that were killed during the tribulation are not the same people as the 24 elders. They ask a question and they receive an answer. Bringing us to our last point concerning the fifth seal, we saw their identity, the curi their curiosity, their garments, they were clothed in white garments, and last, their command. Verse 11 says, And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. These martyred souls will cry out to God to avenge their deaths, but they will not be told to rest a little. They are told to be less to rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, was completed. One day we will be looking at these tribulation saints in heaven as the church. When we do look at them, we as the church will have a resurrected body, and these martyrs that we will be looking at do not yet have a resurrected body. Because it's in according to Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, that the tribulation martyrs will be resurrected at the time of the second coming when Christ returns to the earth. But notice that Revelation 25 says this is still considered to be the first resurrection. It began with the Lord's resurrection. It will continue with the resurrection of the believers at the time of the rapture. 
according to 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17, and it will conclude with the tribulation martyrs and Old Testament believers at the end of the seven years tribulation, according to Daniel 12, 1 to 2. The unsaved dead will come to life to be judged at the end of the millennium. A thousand years later. Now that, according to Revelation 20, 11 to 15, that is called the second resurrection. Daniel 12, 2 tells us that there are two types of resurrections. One to everlasting life and the other to shame and everlasting contempt. So while there are several resurrection events, there are only two types of resurrections. The first resurrection and the second resurrection. I want you to notice that even in heaven, there is a time factor. There will be times we wait to see the hand of God. The fact that these martyrs were told to wait or to rest shows us that resting or waiting has all to do with the sovereign will of God, even here below on earth. That's why here on earth we wait for God's will. That's why it is written, the just shall live by faith. Can we by faith accept that truth? We do know that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. God wants us to count on His promise and pray to Him through faith. Notice as we look at our text, we the church are represented by the 24 elders that are in heaven, and we are looking to a peculiar group of martyrs. They, they do not have a resurrected body as yet, but they are people. They have the ability to think. They act and see and talk, and they exist. That is how it is right now for all those that die in Christ before the rapture. They're up in heaven with all their faculties. At the rapture, we get a, res a glorified, resurrected body like Jesus had at His resurrection. Meanwhile, before the Lord comes for His church, we are to occupy till He comes. Consider the future and the eternal rewards that follow the good works that are done for the Lord because we are saved. Make a commitment to stay with us as we journey through this book that reveals the Lord Jesus Christ and our future. Until next time, meditate on these things and may God bless you and make you a blessing. Maranatha.